The year is 2020. Millions of people are taking up piano lessons all around the world, and the industry has changed enormously in just five short years, really. What used to be an easy question, that is whether to buy a digital or an acoustic piano, isn't really so clear anymore. After all, if you were a serious player or an aspiring student or even a casual player that had an appreciation for really great craftsmanship and sound, the default choice was always acoustic. You didn't even think twice about it. But with the arrival of some extremely compelling hybrid pianos, we have more choice than ever. And it's nice to know exactly where to start that shopping and research process. So in this video, we're going to cover the different types of those hybrid pianos, the brands and the models you might want to check out and what might be the best fit for you. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started on this right away. So first, let's start with a definition. What is a hybrid and what are the types that are available? And let me begin by saying many of these labels are really my own. Uh, the industry almost, I think intentionally, keeps this label very vague and poorly used so that they can kind of extend the, the aura of this, this super trendy catchword to as many price points as possible. So let's begin with what I call true digital hybrids. These are pianos which generate tone digitally, but they both amplify the tone with acoustic components and you activate the tone yourself with an acoustic action. In other words, the tone generation is really the only thing that isn't an acoustic piano uh, component. And this comes with many benefits. Uh, you get to customize the sound in a lot of cases. You have control of the sound. Uh, you can use headphones, you've got volume control, everything. You also have integration with other instruments and devices. And minimized maintenance. Uh, the price point for these instruments tends to range from around $7,000 up to about $15,000. And these instruments are going to feel like real pianos because they use full acoustic actions. They are going to sound like real pianos. Uh, some actually have actual spruce soundboards in them. They don't have to be tuned and they're going to play nicely with everything from your smartphone to computer, any other electronic instruments. They very much integrate into a wide variety of digital settings. So for customers who are equally concerned about both convenience as well as musical quality, this is the best that it gets. The leaders in this particular category are Kawhi and Yamaha. In fact, really, they're the only players in this field at all. Uh, the Yamaha Avant Grand Series, namely the N1X, N2, and N3X, are all using acoustic Yamaha actions to activate the tone generator. And then they use an array of high-quality speakers and cabinets to produce a very convincing acoustic experience. The Kawhi Novus series, on the other hand, also uses both acoustic upright and grand actions that are true Millennium 3 Kawhi actions. But in the case of the NV5, they actually employ the use of a real spruce soundboard. This is not a gimmick, this is an actual spruce soundboard, and it's being transduced by Onkyo magnets. So it's all really cool stuff. It's a similar approach to what Yamaha does on their transacoustics and Kawhi does with their Aura series, but it's happening right on that NV5. The feel is top notch across all of those lines, but one of the trickiest things to get right is the response curve. So I would suggest that you play these instruments uh, certainly above the 50% range, otherwise it's going to seem like these actions are quite heavy. So it's just a quick tip. If you're playing without headphones, make sure it's more than 50% up. The next category is what we'll call true acoustic hybrids. Now these are acoustic pianos which have digital features integrated into them at a factory level. These are perfect choices for people who want an acoustic piano most of the time, but for both sound management and entertainment reasons would like digital features as well. These acoustic hybrids can be fully muted and played with headphones. You can play them normally just like a regular acoustic piano or played in some combination of those two uh, functions, adding digital sounds to the acoustic piano sound for really a cool, lush, it's very engrossing playing experience. 
These have a similar price range to the true acoustic, or sorry, to the true digital hybrids, uh, with prices that start kind of in and around the $10,000 range and they go up from there. The latest round of these true acoustic hybrids are also best represented by Kawai and Yamaha, who have the Aras and the Trans Acoustic lines respectively. Both are really well done products. Kawai's latest Aras brings the whole category really kind of up a notch and into the 21st century truly with built-in color touchscreen control, there's full audio in and out lines, Bluetooth connectivity, including the Bluetooth audio, and four Onkyo transducers. The Yamaha recently released their next generation, which they call the TA2. Uh, they still sling the control underneath the piano, uh, but you can use it with improved quality of the digital sound. And of course, both Kawai and Yamaha have uh, external free apps that you can load on your mobile device so you can control both the transacoustic and the RS uh, from a tablet if you wanted to. Now the third category is what most people would refer to as a silent piano. Now, we're not talking about sort of the saloon pianos that would accompany silent films from 100 years ago. These are regular acoustic pianos, um, but they can be silenced so you can play them uh, without disturbing neighbors or family members. They're very similar to the full acoustic hybrids like the Aras or the Transacoustic, except that instead of generating the digitally produced tone through a real soundboard, there are just regular speakers installed at various points on the piano, or in some cases, there's no speakers at all. Uh, they only use, uh, or you can only use them really uh, with headphones. So these instruments are usually just a few thousand dollars more than what those pianos plain would have been in a store. And in some cases, you can get the full package down close to the $5,000 range if you're starting with a very basic acoustic. Uh, in some ways, I see this as the same customer as your full hybrid acoustic, but it's got fewer features and there's a lower price point. Uh, it's also much simpler for manufacturers to include these types of features. And so we go from just two brands, Kawai and Yamaha, to like dozens. You've got Seiler, Kawai, Yamaha, Beckstein, Hoffman, Steinway. It's a pretty long list of instruments where you can get this silent function and they're all available and have the ability to mute the acoustic part of the piano and replace this with a digitally produced sound that can be heard either through headphones or if they're available, the speakers on the piano. Again, I think this is perfect for someone who is either going to use the piano mostly in acoustic mode, uh, but need the ability to mute it occasionally and or maybe they're using the piano for some MIDI inputting as part of a home studio. The fourth and final category I'm going to cover here is what I'll call the hybrid action digitals. Now these are digital pianos that have integrated some major aspect of an acoustic action such as say a full length key stick, but do not in fact have a full acoustic action. And besides the action generally, really they're just normal digital pianos with speakers, tone generators, and a lot of fun features. Uh, so pianos that uh, fall into this category, uh, these would be like Roland's, uh, where they have these hybrid actions in their higher series like the LX and the HP, their DP lines. Uh, Kawhi, this would include like their CA series or the MP11 or VPC1 stage pianos. Um, Yamaha's CP4 digital piano and some of their upper level CVP pianos would also qualify or fall into this category. Uh, these instruments start around the $3,000 range, give or take, and it goes up as high as six dollars or $7,000 depending on features and model. And to me, it's a nice go-between for people who want to keep their budget similar to maybe what they would have normally spent on a pre-owned upright, which kind of three to 5,000 is a very, very common uh, price range that people enter the market with, uh, while getting a more consistent and reliable instrument to play on than some of those used would have provided for. Many of them use the same sound chip technology as the more expensive full hybrids we've talked about earlier, but you save with smaller, lower quality amplifiers, there's normally fewer speakers, and more affordable cabinet options as well. So for people who want the price point, to still feel like a digital piano purchase, but want the best action they can get for the money, these are exactly the instruments that you want to be looking at. There's literally one piano in the whole industry that doesn't really neatly fit into any one of these categories, and that's the CA99 from Kawai. It's got the full soundboard like the NV5, so it's sounding like it's kind of a full digital hybrid, but 
it uses a hybrid action which just simulates a grand feel. It doesn't actually have the full grand piano action like a Novus 10 does or the NX3 Avant Grand from Yamaha. Um, but still worth checking out if you're really into the hybrid thing. It's been a popular option for sure. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this has helped you to understand exactly what hybrid piano options are out there what hybrid piano means, and perhaps what the type of category might be the best fit for you and your family to investigate a little bit further. Be sure to check out all of our reviews of hybrid pianos on the channel, and if it's the first time you've seen us here on YouTube, we'd really encourage you and ask you to subscribe. Uh, it's awesome to have people joining our community, uh, for us to be interacting with people who have great questions. We try and get to as many of those as possible, and certainly we hope you've enjoyed the film. So uh, we will see you back for more videos shortly. My name is Stu Harrison. Thanks so much for watching.